Um, there was a great big, 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 big thing called Not In Our Names in New York City. Um, and I was living in Boston at the time, and I was part of an affinity group that was trying to change the world, of course, um, that was, um, it was all women. Um, it was called Black Sweaters, I believe. And um, it was, there was something called Black Socks in Britain um, around the Green and Women's thing. And we decided we were in Boston, so we call ourselves Black Sweaters. And we did lots and lots and lots of things, but we also really did a lot around the not in our names thing. And I'm pretty sure it was just about that time. Um, it was just about that time when the idea for should we do something up here because of all the missiles and maybe they're here, maybe they're not here, but even if they're not here, it's a good symbolic place. There's a whole lot of stuff that has happened in upstate New York um, throughout history. Um, but also there's a, there's a lot of people who have done things to change the world in this area of upstate New York. And so let's, let's look for some land around this Seneca Army Depot. And oh yeah, and so I, I was never part of the people who were really the visionaries, um, but I, because I was in the affinity group with some of the people who were the visionaries, um, Jessica Shubo and other people, um, I, I was there for people saying, yeah, this is a really good idea, and oh, we just found some land, and shall we buy the land? Well, who should buy the land? Shall we put it in a couple women's names, or shall we put it in everybody's name, or how do we do that? And I guess we have to put it in a couple women's names to buy it, but, and how are we going to do it? And so a lot of the sort of planning, what we're going to do and how we're going to do it, that happened not in this area, but happened in New York and in Boston, I got to hear. I didn't get to hear the stuff, the local stuff, and the local women who were finding the stuff, and um, I, I didn't know them. But um, yeah, that's so that's when I first heard about the Peace Encampment. Uh -huh. And before we go further, would you just, for the sake of history and for folks who won't know, mm -hmm. tell us what not in the name, not in our name was, what that meant to you? Okay. Um, at that, it, it was a, It became something else, and other people took it and used it for something else, which is fine and great. But um, it was a boy. Was it too much? My memory is oh. like, yeah. Um, it was a. We did so many different things. It was a big thing. I believe it was in New York City. Maybe you know, it was in Washington. Maybe it was in New York City. Um, we were really going, we were trying to figure out how do you change the world? How do you make an impact in the world? How do you say there are things that we need to do differently? And, and how important it is in the United States to be part of the people who make the decisions. And so we are we we have that responsibility. We can't just say, "Oh, somebody made the decision for us." We're part of the people who make the decisions, and we vote for people, and we can speak out, and we have freedom of the press, and we can do all this stuff, and we need to do all this stuff, and we're responsible to do all this stuff um, to make the world into a safe place, a healing place, a helpful place, and. So we were thinking, you know, what can we call it? What can we call it? Okay, well, we're going to say this is not in our names. Yes, we are paying for this, and we're, but we're saying, no, this is wrong. This is not something that we're going to say is okay to do in our names. So we came up with this idea of not in our names. And then I think a couple of years later, people used it as something else, too. So that was, that was great, too. And I forget what exactly that other thing was. But um, it's a big I think it was in New York City. Maybe it was in Washington. I don't remember. It's fun. Yeah. Who knows? It's good. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but it was a very exciting time because, you know, I was 
in my 20s, and so I thought we could change the world. And the world has changed, and the world has become better, and the world hasn't become better. And but I think that I think that people I think that it's really important to say that this is the world that we have, and we're responsible for it, and we can affect it, and. Um, and so I, I was part of this group who really looked at everything in the world and it, we did a lot of anti-apartheid stuff, a whole lot of anti-apartheid stuff. We did a lot of stuff um, about the missiles and I don't even remember exactly what they are. I mean, we did also, we did trainings and posterings and lectures and all sorts of things, but then we thought, well, it would be nice to have a place, it would be nice to have a focal place, a focal point, um, just for a summer. <laughs> it was going to be just for a summer, and you people, other people, I'm sure have said it, but it was going to be just for a summer, for a whole summer, um, to have one place where people can go, can come, and it, it was a little bit modeled on Greenham Commons, because that was happening at that time, um, a couple of years before that. And so we were thinking, well, we want to have something like that here. And look at the incredible energy for change that's happening there, and we want to have that here. Um, so. so when did you, when you did get to Seneca that first summer, mm -hmm. give us your impressions of what that was like. Um, it was a piece of farmland. <laughs> um, people were in tents. Um, people sat around campfires and talked. People sat around, worked at cooking things, at cleaning up things, at building things. And we talked and talked and talked and talked and talked and talked. and. Talked and what are you doing in your area? What are you doing in your area? Um, what do you, how do you see the world? How do you see power? How do you see... There was lots of talking. Um, there was lots of, lots of feeling like, yes, we can do something. Yes, we are doing something. Um, my mom came up, actually, for when the big crossing over the fence thing happened. Um, my mom came up, my sister was there. Um, my sister and I actually went over. Um, my mom didn't go over because she was afraid she'd miss her ride if <laughs> something happened. <laughs> um, but, so it, it was a very gentle place, but also lots of energy for change. Um, there was a couple big walking par parade kind of things that happened um, through Romulus and stuff. Um, boy, and through Geneva maybe? Or Waterloo. Some, Waterloo. It was Waterloo, yeah, through Waterloo. Um, and people wore signs and carried things and we weren't met with a great deal of enthusiasm because most of the um, economy there was centered around, not all of it, but a lot of economy was centered around the Army Depot, and so people were upset that people were saying, close it down, or stop it, or no more missiles of destruction. I'm curious about how the inception idea that you were around women talking about, we should do this, and what happened in the process before it actually happened? You, and as I said, I was around the edges of it. I wasn't central to it, so... Um, but you had already, in your mind, were going to come to whatever ended up happening. You would, you would show up and visit. You knew that at that point? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was going to help change the world. Okay, so you had to be there to do that. <laughs> yeah. Great. What... I mean, I say it in a sort of silly way, but, but we, I think that energy is really important, that people feel like, yeah, you do, everything you do changes the world and everything you are and everything you put out and 
if you're sit, just sitting quiet, you're changing the world in one way. And if you're talking about it, you're changing the world. And you have to figure out what you want the world to look like and put your energy there. And um, it may go that way or it may not, but it'll go some way that it wasn't going before. So. And before yeah. this idea of the peace camp and the not in our name, did you know from an early age that you wanted to change the world? Did your upbringing have to do with it? Did it did. It did. I'm a Quaker. I grew up as a Quaker. Um, I grew up um, with friends who were... I was a kid during the 60s, but I grew up with people who were draft resistors and who went on marches and who did that kind of stuff. Um, and in Quakerism, there is an idea that this is the kingdom of God, and this is the kingdom of God. There's not any other kingdom of God. This is the kingdom of God, and so you got to make it that way, and you got to do it, and you have to be proactive. Um, there's this is silly. It's not going to go on the tape, but there's a um, Quaker joke that somebody who somebody comes into Quaker meeting and sits down, and it's all very quiet, and Quakers. There are different kinds of Quakers, but Quakers worship in silence from the kind of Quakers that I am, and um, wait to be inspired. Um, and so this person is sitting there and sitting there and, and whispers to the person next to them, when does the service begin? And the person whispers back, when the worship is done. <laughs> so service is an important part of Quakerism, and yeah. It comes from being led by the Spirit, but and you try and look for the truth, and so all that stuff played into why this made sense to me. Um, my grandmother, when she started becoming very forgetful and had Alzheimer's, and she would she would wake up and say, "Oh, I just had the most wonderful talk with Charles Darlington, who was her husband who had died." and Gandhi and Martin Luther King. And so I had this image in my mind that that was important. My father had actually gone to the um, Washington Monument um, speech that um, Dr. King had given, and I had known that. And so I, this was in my, this is something you can do, this is something you should do. I actually didn't get involved at first because with doing all sorts of sit-ins and whatnots, because I thought, no, I have to really understand it and figure it out, and it has to be perfect, and I have to be doing exactly the right thing in exactly the right moment. And then I grew up a little bit and realized that you can't know what the exactly right thing to do is, and so what you do is you do what you do, and you live your life, and you make changes as you do, and you hope that that brings better stuff. How you spent time then at the camp? I did. I spent, boy, and I don't even remember, three weeks maybe there, um, three weeks or a month maybe. Um, I'm a teacher, and so I had the summer. Um, that I could do stuff with, and um, so I spent two, yeah, two or three or four weeks. I don't remember which one there. Um, living in a tent, as I said, my mom lived with me for I think a whole week. She, I think she was there for a week, and my sister was here for a couple of days. She came up from Philadelphia with a group of um, women, and hmm. You know, I don't think I went back after that first year, though. I think things changed in my life and where I was, and I moved to New York, and things just changed, and what I was doing and where I could be changed. And so I think that was it for my participation was that first year. Uh -huh. So yeah. do you have um, memories of things that happen what was a typical day or actions that you might have done while you were there? 
A lot of just day-to-day washing the dishes, cooking, talking, 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 going on some marches. I remember I went with some people to, it might have been Geneva, to the courthouse because some people were in jail maybe or I don't even quite remember. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, there was one time that there were some local teenage kids who did something and um, I was hanging out and I think they threw something over the fence and um, that and we weren't sure where it was going to go when we called the police and the police drove me around in the car and um, and I don't think they even asked me my name but I drove around with them for a while and um, then my aunt who lives in Ithaca um, got the paper the next week and said oh look there's a picture of you driving around with the police <laughs> I'm like oh <laughs> fine <laughs> um, but um, yeah but but I mean nothing happened from it it was just kids uh-huh. um, and yeah I, I mean there were a couple women who I was in the affinity group with who were more courageous and I mean at one point the water tower changed its sign and they had been off at night time doing that um, and we were all excited and how wonderful and oh wait there was something up there was a little something up at the gate right in Romulus. Boy, it was very early on and there was a little something that happened, some little marchy, march lit or something right there. But it wasn't the big one that was uh, later right. in the summer. Were to the main gate yeah. where the August <coughs> maybe might have yes. been yeah. at the truck gate. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, there was some the other backside. little something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, you talked about you and your sister went over the fence. Yeah. During maybe the August action. It was the August one. Uh huh. Yeah. So could you tell us about that? What happened to you? It was a hot day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I went over the fence. Um, Boy, I think, okay, there's no, no, um, I went over the fence, all the processing happened right there. Um, I, I, I've gone over so many fences that it's like, when right. was that one? What happened there? But, um, <laughs> or, and the, the processing happened right there, and they let us out on our own recognizance without our real names and said, go away, basically. Uh-huh. This was a nice symbolic action. Go away. But that's what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be a symbolic action. It was supposed to be asking people to stop just going about doing their day-to-day stuff and think, why would we do this? So it was just sort of, for me, it was just a way to have people say, oh, why are they worried about missiles? Why are they worried about us paying for missiles? Why are they worried about the Seneca Army Depot? What's going on with that? And just to raise a question for people. Yeah. And even though you didn't return to the encampment after that first summer, were you aware that it was still existing or that yes. anything was happening? And how did you know about that it was still in existence? How do you think you knew? <laughs> well, I think I know. <laughs> Uh, talk to people, talk to people who were still involved. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, I have lost touch with people now, but I was still in touch with people for a while after that. Um, and yeah, I'm just feminism circles, you talk to people and you know what's going on. And Did you? Remember or know that the base, at the point when the base was closed down? You know, I don't remember mm-hmm. when that was. But you were aware at some I point was aware. in the story of it that it happened? I was aware that it was closed down. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. 
Yeah, I partially. Um, I think it was the next year. We had done some anti-apartheid thing in Boston, and um, a whole bunch of us were going to be arrested. And it ended up that one other woman and I were arrested, and that was it. And um, there was a big demonstration, but we were the only two arrested. And we were not treated gently at all. In fact, we were treated quite ungently. And um, I stopped doing CD after that. I, I thought there are other ways to make my point. There are other ways to ask people to stop and think about things. And so that started my pulling away from um, pulling away from things and then I moved and so I I wasn't then looking for a new affinity group I was looking for other ways to change the world kind of things mm -hmm. so. and part of that though part of because I I was fi trying and trying and trying and trying to figure out that time I was 23 I think trying to figure out how do you change the world, how do you change, how do you make the world a better place. And even at that time I was starting to think, how much of it is telling other people to change their minds and how much of it is the way I live my life and saying what I believe in and being who I am and talking to people and I probably had more guts to do that as I grew older than when I was younger and saying, oh, we'll do these big things and that'll make people think about things. And more I'm thinking, you know, you just talk to people and you just live your life and you just work for what you think is right. And that may be what is a more, I don't know, is a better way to change the world. I still want to change the world. I still want to make the world a better thing. but. Maybe these big things aren't the way to do it. Maybe it makes more sense to do it in just your whole life. Just my whole life. Did you feel you brought something specific to the camp? I think that everybody brought stuff to the camp. I thought that every I think that everybody brought their own experience and worked together to make power and energy for change and a more healing world. So me specifically, no. But I think that every single person did. So I think that it's important that every single person was there and bringing their own experiences and then taking that experience back to their own lives. I think that was very important. I mean, I know some people were like the healing people and some people were, no, I was just a person. Part of the whole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. There were garbage queens and there were... <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's what right. Security. Did you get to do security? I did. <laughs> I did. I got to do a little bit of everything. Uh -huh. Got to see, you know, what the dew was like at four in the morning uh -huh. <laughs> stuff like that. But. Uh -huh. Make cowboy yeah. coffee? Didn't make cowboy coffee. No? Okay. No? <laughs> Not that I remember. Um, Do you yeah. remember any interactions with townspeople to, between you and them? Conversations? Um, this police guy. <laughs> um, sometimes we, we used to go to an um, Italian restaurant. Um, down the road a little bit. Nicastros. Nicastros, yes. <laughs> um, and chat with people about what we were doing. But I don't remember any specific things. Um, I remember people being uncomfortable in the town of Romulus around us. And, and I was of the age that I didn't make those overtures to people that perhaps I could have and I didn't. Um, yeah, no. No, there was something that you had talked about earlier. Oh, 
about about um, it being a one summer action. Mm -hmm. And were there some people who were unhappy about it not closing? Um, I didn't talk to people a lot, um, a lot about it. I was a little uncomfortable that it was content. Well, I wasn't uncomfortable. I was not interested in putting energy into it continuing. Mm -hmm. I felt like having been there, having made a statement, having met together and joined together and then gone off into our own places, um, that that was what I was interested in and that it had happened. And it was done for me. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure why other people wanted it to continue, um, but if they were interested in making it continue, that was fine. There might have been something around when they bought the land, the people who put up the money for it were thinking that it would then be re sold again and used for some other good thing. Um, there was an older woman who was retiring from farming and she was the one who sold the land and um, her neighbors were not particularly happy that she had sold the land but where the land was she was afraid that she would not get any other buyer and she'd been trying and she was afraid that she wouldn't get any other buyer and so she ended up selling the land to the peace encampment but I'm not clear about the money thing. Yeah, it it felt like people were holding on to something longer than it needed to be held on to and that moving on and doing other things was important. But that's what was important for me. And if people felt called to do that and felt that that was an important thing, then I thought it was silly at the time. But now I'm thinking, okay, that was what they wanted to do and that's great. The big thing that happened, one big thing that happened is I met my girlfriend there. I met her one night um, when I was washing dishes and we were having a big thing. She doesn't remember that. She met me the next night at um, after Waterloo when we were in the parking lot or whatever at that school. I don't remember that. <laughs> but then we started talking. <laughs> she was from New York City. I was from Boston. Um, I was in a car with a bunch of women at one point. We drove to Ithaca and we went to a bar. And either I was sitting on her lap or she was sitting on my lap and we got to know each other. <laughs> car rides, they've got yeah. a major source of uh -huh. yeah. relationship. Yeah. Somebody mentioned um, that for them that was one of the kinds of things that has come out of Seneca was a realization about kinship and the kinds of relationships yeah. that women can have and that mm -hmm. kind of moved in a direction of maintaining friendships with ex-lovers. Oh, nice. Maybe, yeah. 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 Maybe it's nice or maybe it happened. <laughs> maybe that's where it happened. Um, I don't know. It, but well, for that person, I'm sure it did. And that, yeah. Yeah. And so well, kind of did for you too because you want yeah. to have that relationship. It's true. It's true. I would not <laughs> have that relationship. It's very true. And she was part of a pretty strong affinity group in New York City, and I was part of a pretty strong affinity group in Boston. But we had never crossed paths before. Mm -hmm. um, we'd been at a lot of the same things, but we'd never uh -huh. crossed paths before. So that was a time where you were just sitting and being with people and talking with people and getting to know other people besides the people who you. We're in the same area with and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And were you in a relationship when you came to your camp? No. Or I think I had just finished a year long one that didn't work or something like that. Maybe. In lesbian relationships? Or oh, yeah. So you've already been yeah. out. Yeah. But that's why, I think that's one reason why I may be in there eating a banana with long hair, because people wanted to have some people who look sort of straight in. <laughs> <laughs> you got typecast with a straight person? <laughs> uh.
Oh, that's funny. <laughs> they didn't set you up. As they like, didn't set you're me saying up. You're saying you think yeah. I got kept in. <laughs> I think I get kept in for that reason. <laughs> there were actually a lot of straight women. Yeah, there were. And it was interesting because I'd mostly been doing a lot of um, actions with other lesbians. I and mean, there were a, a bunch of different lesbian, um, mostly lesbian, some by some, not very many straight women, in a bunch of different affinity groups in Boston. And so there was a real strong lesbian affinity group, change the world kind of thing happening in Boston um, at that time. But so then to come to Seneca, and it, <coughs> are you making a comparison to? I'm not making people? this because you said there were a lot of straight. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and, and yes, and thank you. Thank you. I, I can't even remember. I thought you were going somewhere. <laughs> yes. No, I'm not and making a point. Yes, no, you are. Um, yeah, and so there were a lot of more straight women that I was working with in Seneca than I had been working with in that kind of intense, civil disobedient, changing the world right now, here we are, changing the world right now, kind of energy than I had been used to working with. Yeah. And what about multi-generational, did you have mm -hmm. any, was that happening at Seneca more than at Yes, your, that was happening much more in Seneca than in Boston. Although, there were a bunch of older women and older lesbians who were sort of the mentors of a lot of people in Boston. And there were other organizations, but in this sort of civil disobedience affinity group movement, it was mostly young people. Not so much so the New York affinity groups. The New York affinity groups were more multi-generational. Um, yeah. And when you, I'm not remembering, when you started and spoke about the affinity groups in mm -hmm. Boston, and was that, were you already a part of an affinity group prior to yes. getting ready for Seneca? So you were already yes. affinity grouping around other actions, mm -hmm. around the not in our name stuff? Uh, um, around that, but also around all sorts of actions that we did, littler ones and bigger ones and with other groups, and um, around um, missiles up in the area of Boston, okay. um, around um, what were the missiles that were people were all focused on then? Cruise. Cruise, Cruise thank you. Anti-cruise stuff um, anti and um, a lot, a lot of anti-apartheid stuff we were doing. Things are so complex, and I should be trying to understand them more than I do, but I never could get a handle on things entirely at any time in my life. I mean, it was all, it's sort of like, what is God? <sighs> yeah. What is the way of the world? How do you make the world a better place? <sighs> so, yeah, I, I think I do one foot in front of the other, say what I think kinds of things, but um, I mean, and, and yeah, I'm talk to people and try and change things, but not as, um, I'm not thinking I can change other people as much anymore. So like, I, I think that it's important to do what is set in front of you to do, and so if that is what rings true to you, then that's a really important thing for you to be doing. And it's a really important thing for me that they're doing that, because that's what rings true to do to them, and they are speaking their truth, and they are doing what they are feeling led to do. Um, I'm not feeling led to do that. But I'm, feel, I'm led to do other things, and I think that as long as you don't sort of just sit back and say, oh, I can't do anything, forget it. I mean, that is also doing something. So I don't think that that's a good thing, but I think that you have to do what I have. I have to do what I feel led to do. And when I see other people doing what they're led to do, that's great. And especially when people do outrageous or exciting or wonderful things, it does bring an energy into the world that isn't there when I just sort of put one foot in front of the other. And that's a good thing to do. But, you know, when you do things out of the ordinary, it does sort of light people's idealism or idea that you can change things. Okay. I think little things that you Did I'm forgetting. 
Um, it was hot. I remember it being hot. <laughs> I remember it being hot. I remember there being lots of stars. Yeah, I remember people talking and singing a lot. And just, it was good energy. And not, I mean, you don't, good energy helps you move forward and think about ways to move forward. And um, I wanted to remember what I had been thinking in my early 20s uh -huh. and where I had been, and it had felt like such an important, very strong time in my life. And I wanted to sort of think about how my younger self could inspire my older self. Uh -huh. And I wanted to think about what were the important things for me then and what is important for me now and where to go from here. Because uh -huh. cool. in some ways I feel like I have uh -huh. just let things go on in the world that perhaps I need to be more. That's not okay. Mm -hmm. And this is what I think, and this is what I think should be different. And it still is true that, you know, I'm responsible for what the U.S. does because they're my elected representatives and I pay taxes. So what the U.S. does is I have a responsibility in that. And so mm -hmm. maybe it would be good if I was around more good energy <laughs> thinking about doing this. <laughs> Inspiring just to sort of think about it and think about it. That was good. And what I want her to know about it, what I want my daughter to know about it, and what I want my daughter to know that she can do in the world.